ain't ready for that, man. It's the Cardi B crowd, man. They ain't ready for that, man. They, they, want, they want a drip. That's what they want to do, man. They want that drip. That's what they want. How y'all feel, Brooklyn? Make some noise, man. We in here tonight, man. Woo! I'm glad y'all can come out on Wednesday, man. Party with me, man. Nothing like good 90s music, man. Nothing like good 90s music. Music today got us all messed up, man. Everything from the lyrics to the dances, or the lack thereof. You notice that when you hear the lyrics these days, there's no words. I get the bag and tumble and I get the mug and flip it and mumble it. Do what is that? Is someone the man? Is someone who giving the mama the little mama a thought? Giving the bed. That's all I heard. Little mama a thought. That's all I heard. <laughs> This whole table understood everything I said. I don't even know what I said. <laughs> like back in the days, you had an easy dance. Put that, what, 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 oh, all right, well, I ain't. You're a part-time DJ, isn't it? That's the last one, I'm going on break. Damn, man, I'm out of here. Well, there goes the rest of that joke. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> like music is crazy right now. Like there's nothing you can do to come back from this. This we've gotten so elementary at this point. All the older people are just confused. We don't know if we can see now or what. Like it seems like every multi-platinum artist was in that special class that they kept in the basement. You know the one with six kids, eight teachers, and fourteen security guards. You know the twelve to one to one. Them, you know. Them. Woo, they used to put the paint in the bag and breathe the paint in the nose. You were you know, I don't want to say retarded. They were special, you know, that's what they called them. Multi-platinum artists, man. But the, you know what? I'm not gonna lie though, because when we was coming up, I, like my generation, I'm 30 years old, right? So I'm not too far behind. Our generation, we had, who laughing at my age? <laughs> Look at this young man talking about 30. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing till you get hosed down with them dogs on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> in February, two months ago, I probably stepped over the line. Like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, oh, there you go. You're off break now. You let go. You get the punch in, and you hope you punched out. We ain't paying for you to piss now. Just bring somebody to leave like that. You know what I mean? I need you. You the DJ saved my life last night. You just gonna leave it, brother. I don't even know what the hell I was saying no more. You're gonna leave me hanging and distract me. You know what I mean? But no, my generation, we had bad music too. You know, it didn't it, it didn't just start with me. It, 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 when hip hop began, it was kind of retarded. You remember one of the first the earliest songs? I said the hip. Hop, the hippie, the hippie to the hip, hip hopper, you don't stop the rocket to the bang, bang, boogie to up, jump, the boogie's in the boogie with the boogie to be. Not one word was spoken in that entire phrase there. <laughs> Fast forward, they came up with something else. Well, a hip hop, hooray, ho, hey, right? Okay, cool, now we get a little more advanced. 2000s, we brought it right back with the Yin Yang twins. Shout it, crawl on the floor wide open. Ski so much they call a Billy Ocean. Roll like an 18 wheeler. That whole fire, but this whole killer leaking. So, what is wrong with him? Does he have a sinus infection? Can we get him some Mucinex? Now we all messed up, man. We right back to the bull, man. We, woo. It's all messed up now. We got the Migos, man. When I, when I heard that, I thought it was a Spanish group. I was like, oh, yeah. Aventura is back. Man. Look at this here. Now we all messed up now. Cardi B at the top now. And I ain't gonna lie, Cardi B doing a thing. Only in America can you go from stripping and shaking that ass for cash to the top of the billboard, Charles. Only in America got it. Yeah. Now, 20 years ago, we had Lauren Hill. You remember Lauren Hill, right? She said, Girls, you know you better. Because some guys, some guys are only. That's what I'm talking about, woman's empowerment. Lauren said, put the coochie away because they coming, bitch, they coming. <laughs> now Cardi said, I'm a fucker, man, I get some money. That's what we gonna do. <laughs> I said, that's solicitation, you got to watch that. <laughs> Cardi, la 
knock people off for that. You can't just say that, man. But you know, the reason they do that now, the reason it's like that now is because a lot of the kids, you know, they, they, we need education reform because the kids ain't getting the resources that they so desperately need coming up, you know. I'm a middle school teacher. I see this all the time. Sixth grade science. By the way, shout out to all the kids who took their English ELA exam today. Yeah. Uh, shout out to them. Don't tell nobody about me in the staff room. Don't send no emails or nothing, all right? I'll send a virus right to your work email. Keep playing. <laughs> but we need that reform, man. We got to take care of that reform because the kids is not getting right, man. I remember back in the day when we had special ed, even though we was in the basement, we had, we had vocation. <laughs> We had vocational options. Remember, you could take wood shop. You could learn to be a carpenter, right? You could take the mechanics course so you could learn to do cars, right? Even if you was one of the soft boys who liked to skate, you could take home economics, learn to bake, right? You know. You know, little quiet, tall boys, you know. We don't got that no more. They, they, they got something called inclusion classes now. It's, what they do is they take some inexperienced 20-year-old teacher from Long Island or New Jersey or something, and they put them in the black neighborhoods in the schools with a general education teacher, and they jam all the special kids in there with the regular kids, and they say, scaffold the lesson for 34 kids. And you gotta scaffold all the special stuff for all the regular kids who get bored when they get through all the special stuff. So the kid gets so stressed out because he don't get it. He got four tests coming up in May, so he decide, you know what? I'm gonna get me a gun and shoot everybody. I can't take this shit. And once I'm done, I'm gonna go record an album and go platinum. That's what we're dealing with right now. We gotta fix that, man. We got to fix that. Especially in these schools with these parents coming up in here. Look, if, you, if you're under 30, don't have no kids, get your life together. You, 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 yeah, you're too young having kids now. I don't know. Parent teacher conference is crazy for me, y'all. Crazy, man. When I was growing up, my mama used to come to work, come to school with the house coat on, the slippers, the orthopedic ones too, cause you know she had that bunion, you know. And a belt, say I wish somebody would tell me about you. I'm gonna bust you right in the back of your head in front of Miss Johnson. You were scared, mama put, mama put fear in your heart. These kids don't got no fear in their heart. I had a ninth, ninth grader. 19 years old. <laughs> I ain't lying, you trying to sell me an eighth of weed. No, I am lying, I actually bought the eighth of weed. You know. I gotta support him, he was the only one in the house working. You know. <laughs> said he was gonna continue the family business. Uh, you know what, I, I appreciate that, you know. But it's bad, man, and then I see his mama, his mama younger than me, y'all, come on now. Right now, I had a parent teacher conference uh, last month, and the mama came in there, and she wasn't expecting Mr. Grant. When she said, uh, uh, Mr. Grant, she's expecting this gentleman right here, you know. Just... <laughs> This was she expected now. She not expected me. And, 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 and she come in, she see me, she go, you Mr. Grant? And I look at her, I'm like, you Miss Ramos? <laughs> Lord, y'all got to see Miss Ramos, y'all. She came in there, she had 17-inch Peruvian weave on, y'all. You know, look like this sister right here with the shiny weave on. <laughs> shiny, looking good. Oh, sister, you look good. I know you spent good money on your weave and the scarf. Give it up for her. I know she did. You need a price tag on it next time so we can see just how valuable it is. She came in there with it. 17 inch Peruvian weave, y'all. Four inch French manicure with a $7,827.17 Dominican ass on it, y'all. I'm not playing. She came in there walking around like this is it. Oh, I like almost Oh, I like almost I was like, damn, Miss Ramos, how you doing? Ain't seen in a while. Have a seat, we need to talk about Celeste's grades. Now Celeste, <laughs> now Celeste is one of them kids, you know, she's a, uh, how can I put it? Celeste, uh, for lack of a better word, she's an asshole. Yeah. 
And in so many words, I said, Ms. Ramos, I gotta be honest with you, Celeste, an asshole. Yeah. I'm expecting she takes Celeste home and discipline her, and Celeste came back on Monday, it's still an asshole. Yeah. So I got to deal with Celeste, apparently, so I tried, maybe I, if I get to her mama, I, I can, maybe I can put some sense in it. Now, my friends here, these, these are my comrades here, right? And when I first got the job, Brandon asked me, he goes, yo, let me ask you a question. I said, what's up? He said, have you ever tried to sleep with any of your kids' parents? I said, hold on, first of all, I spent three years working on my license and did all them papers and all. I'm not finna jeopardize my, my career just to get in some, some, some single parent poon, okay? I'm not gonna do that. They got to be valuable. <laughs> you got damn right I tried to sleep with some of my kids' parents every now and again. Have, have you seen the ass on Miss Ramos? That's a $7,682.17 cent ass on that, man. So I'm talking to her, I'm trying to get into her, I'm telling her, you know, her grades are falling. She's not a very nice girl, she's been rude lately, I don't know what's going on. She said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> she's not like this at home, because they ain't never like that at home for some reason. Yeah. She's not like this at home, is there something I can do to help bring up her grades? <laughs> Glad you asked, Miss Ramos. <laughs> Take my email down. <laughs> no, man, I'm just messing with you, man. But it get like that sometimes. You, you gotta see the characters. Man. I had one, I had one kid coming in. His uncle came in for him, but his uncle was a dope fiend, y'all. <laughs> you know how hard it is to tell a dope fiend uncle that his nephew isn't doing too well in school. Cause when you think he focused, he not. He just nodding and shit, you know. <laughs> He's sitting down at the chair, so I'm like, all right, so Mr. James, this is one to let you know, uh, Terrell's grades, you know, he, he's slacking, he got a 90 on one test, and then he got a 55. He's like, well, that's unfortunate, because sometimes I sit and I help him. <laughs> I help him with his chemistry, because I'm good at balancing equations. But if he acting up in school, I'll make sure to tell his mother, hold on a second. Can I use this blackboard? My back is itching. Mmm, damn, this feel good. Mm. And then he tried to discipline Terrell in front of me. Look, Terrell, you need to make sure that you don't dis... <laughs> Respect your teachers like that. They care about you, Drew. Help me out. Terrible. Terrible. It's hard. It's so hard. Terrible. You gotta stay off from drugs, man. It's crazy. Now. Trying to get out. Any educators in the house? Woo! One, two, three, four. Did you hear the sound of despair and that applause? <laughs> <laughs> Only reason we're here is so we can see who hiring. That's all we're here for. Isn't it? We got resumes outside. If anybody wants to, hey, you know. But it's hard, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta do your thing. That's why I'm doing comedy in case teaching don't work out. You know. If your comedy don't work out, I'm gonna be up in there with Dope V Terrell, cuz, uh, well, you know. I'm trying to make it work. My mama hates the fact that I do comedy, man. Hates it, can't stand it. Yeah, she's, she's, she's like, you always in them goddamn clubs, in them holes in the wall. Just like your father in them clubs, you keep messing around, you ain't gonna go mess around and get shot, keep playing, you know? I'm like, Ma, you talking about me always in the club? You in footprints every Tuesday, come on, man. <laughs> My mama like, don't worry about what the fuck I be doing, I'm grown. I remember one time I got on this TV show, right? I said, yo, mom, I'm gonna be on this TV show. Chris Rock is one of the executive producers. I'm really trying to get on. They told me I gotta go down to this club and I gotta make sure I audition for it. They said, you in the club again? I said, yeah, mom, it's a show with Chris Rock. You ain't no goddamn Chris Rock. Man. You lie. 
I'm like, you doing all them damn jokes, always cussing, talking out your ass like an asshole. You just cussing, just talking reckless. You need to stop all that damn cursing and go back to school, get you a good job, be a doctor or a lawyer or something. I said, Mom, you just said 45 curse words in three seconds. You, what are you talking about? She said, don't worry about what the fuck I be doing. I'm grown. I finally got on this reality show like four years ago, right? And I, I got a big check. I got like a $50,000 check off this show, right? This is the biggest money I've ever seen in my life. Of course I did not report it. <laughs> and so I take the money, right? I pay off my student loans. I pay off all my mama credit cards, right? Then I go and I pay off the car that I had at the time. So now I'm left with about $13 in the account, right? <laughs> So then my mama comes home, I write paid on all her credit card bills, I lay them out on the bed, and my mama comes home and she sees paid all over the bed and she picks up the envelope, she goes to him and then she calls me, she goes, hello, baby? Yeah, did you come to the house today? Yeah, I told you I was, yeah, I was gonna come, I came to the house. Did you pay all of these credit card bills for me? Yeah, I paid every last one of them, all 13 of them. She goes, wow, I'm, thank you. I'm so blessed to have a son like you. I, I don't know what I did to make you come out this way, but I thank God that you turned out the way you did. I said, my, yeah, you know, I told you I was gonna take care of you, man. I told you I'm gonna make sure that I do the best I can to get you out of these projects when, you know, from the start with your credit, you know? She goes, God bless you, baby. I love you so much. I said, I love you too, mama. She said, you did all of this from comedy? I said, yeah, I started on comedy and I got these gigs, mom. She said, God bless you. When do you have another show? <laughs> I said, Ma, don't worry about what the fuck I be doing. <laughs> I'm grown. <laughs> Come on with it, man. It's just selfish, you know. Well, that's the kind of character my mom is. She show love, but she show it different, uh, you know. Like, she always tell me, when you gonna bring me some grandbabies? When you gonna bring me some grandbabies? I'm like, hold on, I'm trying to take my time. You don't see the quality of women out here? You don't rather go adopt somebody. Go to Africa, get one of the kids or something. Don't come to me with that now. I'm taking my time, you know. My mama, man, she's always wanting me to come home. She, we gonna bring a nice black girl home, you know, make me proud and everything. Cause I have a history of dating uh, Dominican women because they look black sometimes. <laughs> but for some reason, they don't claim their blackness. Until Black Panther came out two months ago. <laughs> black Panther had everybody claiming they black. They was walking out the movie theater like, y'all saw my they don't tell me. Y'all don't have it, see, y'all don't have it. Growing up in the Bronx, that's all you see, Puerto Ricans and Dominicans and the, the, the sprinkle of blacks around the, around the borough, man. You, you don't really see it. I think it's like eight black people in the Bronx and four of them are here tonight, y'all. <laughs> Seriously, all people you think black, they probably Puerto Rican or Dominican or Panamanian or something, man. Like you can walk through different neighborhoods and you know what kind of neighborhood you walk into and what happens in the neighborhood. You walk through the black neighborhood, yeah, what's up, Sean? You already know what it is, man. We out here, baby, doing my thing, my little one-two, ha, 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 ha. You walk through the white neighborhood, dude, I love Minecraft. You play Fortnite last night, it's freaking awesome. Let's hit up Starbucks and do something. All right, gotta ask my dad for the Porsche first. <laughs> you walk through the Spanish neighborhood, I told you one too many times, I am not black like you. I am Dominican. And that, for some reason, I have this fixation with really trying to, 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 to combat racism head on, right? I never trusted white women, so I said Dominicans is the next best thing. <laughs> Cause I done dated some girls whose father looked like Shabba, and he's still talking crazy. You know what I'm saying? I be walking, man, listen, one thing I love about dating the Dominican woman, when you go see their father, he look at you up and down, but he darker than you. Like this, he's so black, his shadow got a shadow, y'all. This is, this is real stuff here. You understand what I'm saying? And they do weird stuff. It's the same, but it's just a little different. Like black people, you know, when we have cookouts and family functions, we have, you know, you get the cake and the liquor and the potato salad and all that, right? But if there's any Latinos in here, please help me understand this, okay? Cause I had this one girl named Stephanie. We had a function. She says, can I come? I said, of course you could come. That's not even a question. She said, good, can I bring something? Hell yeah, what you wanna bring? I wanna bring potato salad. So wait a minute now, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I don't know if you wanna do that stuff. You know. She's like, no, no, I'm really good. Like trust me, no, my potato salad's a bomb. My whole family love my potato salad. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Black people is very different. We, we have one designated person that brings potato salad to every function, and they bring it in the same Tupperware every time. 
and that person usually had stretch marks on the back of their arms right around this region. So I don't know if you want to mess with Aunt Gwendolyn like that. She said, please, come on. I said, all right, fine. So we get to the function. She go in there. She set the potato salad down next to the original potato salad. Strike one. What are you doing? Don't put that over there. <laughs> I'm chilling on the other side. Yeah, nah, we been talking for about nine months now. Nah, yeah, you see that ad? That's a seven thousand six hundred eighty-two dollars ad. Hell no, nah, the last brother paid for it. No, nah, hell no. Nah. And from across the park, all I heard was, "What the hell is this?" Everybody's shooting, so we run over. I'm like, "Yo, what happened?" It's my mom. She's looking at the two potato salads, and she says, "What the hell is this?" I said, uh, Stephanie bought it. Yeah. Tell her, Stephanie. She said, oh, no, that's potato salad. Proud and happy and glorious. Yeah, that's, that's potato salad. Do, do you like it? She's like, hold on, wait a minute. Potato salad? Oh, why the hell is it pink? <laughs> Stephanie said, oh, no, that's, that's remolacha. In, in my culture, we put remolacha in the potato salad. My mama said, who the hell is remolacha? <laughs> and why is the bitch in the potato salad? Stephanie said, no, remolacha is Spanish for beets. We put beets in a potato salad. My mama said, beets? Oh, beat your motherfucking ass. You put this goddamn remolacha in the potato salad one more time now. Get on out of here. So that was the last time I saw Stephanie. Last time. Yeah. Now I'm back. I'm back in the day game now, baby. I'm, I'm trying to find me some hard. Oh, Lord, it's hard out here, man. I don't. Look, if, if you got somebody, brothers, if you're in here and you're with your woman and she a rider, hold on to that, man. Because once you lose her, it's all over, man. Once you get to my age, I ain't too old, but think about it. Once you get to my age, 30 years old, I'll be 31 in two weeks. Happy birthday to me. I know you don't give a damn. But once, thank you. once you get to my age, man, every woman you meet either got kids or hate their father. You understand know I me? Mean? So if you got a rider, hold on to it, man. If you got a rider, hold on to it, man. I done see some bad stuff, y'all. I'm swiping and trying to meet the women and all that, man. I'm bumbling and tendering and all that. It's hard, man. Because you can't just go up to women no more. You know, you'll catch a Me Too case, lose a job you ain't even got. You got to cyberstalk these hoes, um, these women. You know what I'm saying? Cyber stalk them, y'all. Back in the day, you know, you could run up on them, stalk them, throw rocks at the windows and everything, let their father chase you with a pistol. If you survive, you go, I like that boy, he got heart, you know? He good. Not today, man. You got to you 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 got to meet somebody before meeting them, and then you actually meet them and find out they not actually what you thought they was and stuff, you know. I met one girl, she was beautiful all in the face. Pretty eyes, lips, nose, everything, beautiful complexion. I met up with the girl, she was in a wheelchair, y'all. I still dated her though, she had nice arms, man. She had nice oh yeah, Delts was on swole, y'all. Always got good parking, you know. Never wait online at Six Flags, you know. I got to ride in that little cart when we go to BJ's. You know that. But she hated when I told that joke, though. She hated it when I told that joke. She used to roll up on me at the end of the That's how she pays, you know. <laughs> she rolled up all me on the show. She's like, I don't like the way you're talking about me on your show. You know I'm sensitive about my handicap, okay? I would appreciate if you would please stop. I said, I'm sorry, baby. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it no more, you understand? And, and I'm gonna be honest with you. The way you rolled up on me like that, I like Steph, girl. Strong. It show you know how to stand up for yourself. You know? <laughs> I like that. You don't just let any old body push you around. You know? <laughs> so then she started wheeling out the door. You asshole. <laughs> I said, baby, where you going? She said, don't worry about what the fuck I be doing. I'm grown. <laughs> oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming out to Brooklyn and rocking out with me, y'all. If you enjoyed what you saw, please feel free to follow me on Instagram at official Chris Grant and tune in May 29th at 8 p.m. on Fox. I will be on the season premiere of the new season of The Love Connection with Andy Cohen. So please tune in for that. I appreciate your support. Thank you. God bless. Good night, Brooklyn. Give it up for Ray Charles.